Oh man, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I was really hyper, as people can probably uh, surmise. Uh, probably more hyper than I think now. I think about it a lot now that I must have really been a handful. I mean, I got, I got really into thrash metal around nine and just kind of was like so into that for most of my young formative years. It was thrash and, and Nintendo until I discovered the Bad Brains and then it was like thrash Nintendo and the Bad Brains. I grew up in, in a really urban area, like I grew up in Baltimore City and um, there's a lot of urban culture there. So I, I grew up um, in poverty and around um, like a lot of African American culture, which I think had a giant influence. Both of those things had a giant influence on me. One, I don't feel uncomfortable in any area. Like it doesn't really matter if I'm in like a destitute area, it feels fine to me. Whereas I think a lot of people, if you come from privilege, you have a hard time feeling comfortable. Maybe if you if you go, uh, if you're in a sketchier area, or like, I don't have a problem kicking it with homeless people, you know. Um, between DC and Baltimore, it was just everywhere, you know, to, to get exposed to, to, to real R&B and, and real hip hop and things like that at a young age, I think I had a big influence on me musically, just to have a different influence besides just you know, rock or metal. You know, Guns N' Roses was the first band that I was just really obsessed with, with rock and roll about. I didn't know, I, didn't, I hadn't started thinking about like playing it at all. I didn't start really thinking about playing music until um, maybe a couple years later. But uh, Guns N' Roses was definitely the seed for me. I started singing, um, I guess I was, I, I was playing guitar when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old. And a friend of mine um, who uh, had been my best friend since like second grade started playing drums around the same time I started playing guitar. So we started writing songs together or just trying to butcher our way through like Nirvana songs or Metallica songs, whatever we could play. And, uh, we needed someone to sing, so he would start. He would sing some of the time, and then I would sing some of the time. And uh, once I heard things like Bad Brains and Faith No More and bands with more traditional singers that weren't like hair metal singers, because I was never into hair metal. I never liked bands where there was just a singer, because I just every band I saw besides Guns N' Roses where there was just a singer was like some hair metal band. And the bands that I was really into, like Slayer and Metallica, there a guy playing guitar too. But when I heard uh, Faith No More and the Bad Brains, it kind of like opened my eyes a lot to what could be done with, uh, with the voice over top of heavy music. And uh, I kind of started leaning more towards singing. Yeah, I definitely prefer playing a smaller crowd. Uh, larger crowds, they feel like a commercial, kind of. You feel like you're just uh, playing in a zoo or an aquarium, you know? You're like so far removed away from, from people. And no matter what you do to try to engage them, even if you like run down and, and and, uh, and, and go near them, there's still this like definite like, okay, I'm gonna come down there, I'm gonna walk across the thing, and then there's security guards tugging on you, and it's just kind of, uh, it's not an environment that I don't, I don't understand why anyone enjoys it, to be honest with you. Like the, you know, the festival thing, which I'm happy that they exist, um, but I would much rather see, if there were seven bands on a fest and I wanted to see all, you know, all seven of them, I would much rather see every one of those bands separately in a club, just because I feel like at least for us, like I like the feeling of energy being contained in, in a, in a, you know, with walls and a ceiling, and I, I feel like it's just like a, such a, a, much more combustible environment. And for what we do sonically, uh, the more space there is, the worse we sound. We start to just sound like a, a car drove by real quickly with like the treble turned all the way up and, and no bass whatsoever. It just sounds like a screaming eagle, you know, flew by when we're playing in an open air environment. So yeah, I, I prefer the smaller places. I mean, to me, the goal has always been to forcibly engage people when I, I, I don't want people to feel, it's not even about feeling safe, you know, like we always hear people say, like, well, you guys are like the most dangerous man. And it's never been to me about danger, it's been about connection. Like when you reach out and like grab someone or if you engage them, if you're sweating on them, if you're on top of them, there's, there is an impossibility for them to not be in that moment. Whether they at first are, don't like it, they like don't ruin my shirt or whatever, you know what I mean? There's, it, it very quickly becomes a tangible, you're in a tangible space doing something. You're not just, you know, having a drink, sitting in the stands, you know, watching 
to me, it's like if a baseball player hit a hit the foul ball into your section over and over and over again, where you're like, oh shit, I'm actually at a game. I'm not just watching this on TV. That's what I, I hope to have people feel like when they're watching us. In, in recent years, I definitely have gone from having like no cumulative wear and tear to like a pretty significant amount, like in a really rapid uh, span of time. And I don't feel it when uh, we're playing, but there's definitely times at home where I'm like, oh, I've like my hands and my feet mainly, and my there have probably been fractured or broken like so many times, like from jumping off of PAs, and uh, or just like having kids or people in the crowd like you know pulling on my hands. I've like broken a lot of fingers, dislocated a lot of fingers, and I can feel them just now talking to you. I can feel like every finger of mine has been either broken or or bent completely backwards at some point in time, or, or slid open, or some kind of uh, injury to my hands. So I can I can feel that on a daily basis. Just doing this, I can feel it. And uh, standing up and walking around, I can feel that I've probably had a lot of fractures like in my feet. But um, other than that, I feel I don't I don't have any any regrets. So I came up with the title dissociation before I knew that we were going to take a break. And then Ben and I had a conversation where we discussed the possibility of breaking up. And then we sat with it for a little bit and, uh, and, and came to terms with it. And, and it sounded like it felt like the right thing to do. It felt like it was in the air and we were just kind of giving a, na a name to a sentiment that, that was already there. And um, once that happened, there was like this really interesting synchronicity with the name that I already had, you know, so many people are like, did you, is that name a reference to breaking up? And it wasn't, but once that happened, then it was like, okay, cool. There's all these thematic tie-ins to separation and loss. And uh, so once we knew it was ending, I think we ramped up our, our, uh, our, our um, perfectionism. You know, we, we were like, we need to put everything in here that we want to get in. And we need to make sure that everything we want to say, everything that we're about, everything gets into this record. And um, interestingly enough, we ended up with more songs than we needed for the first time ever. We have leftover songs um, just because we were already uh, had like 45 minutes of music and we had to cut some or else we would have had to put out a double album. And we considered putting out a double album, um, but we just were like, no, 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 let's not, let's not go overboard. Yeah.